Hey, thanks for checking out this week's video. So if you watched last week's, I did um, an elf using the Arteza art supplies. And I did say that I was going to do a review video and well here is said review video. These products were sent to me by Arteza themselves in exchange for a video for their website. However, I wasn't paid to do anything, to say anything, yada yada. So all my opinions and whatnot are my own, but take from it what you will. Just, I like to be as transparent as possible. So now we've got that out of the way, let's get on to the review. Now the products they did send were the 72 set of watercolor pencils, the 48 set of real brush pens, the set of six water brush pens, which are specifically the push button ones because they do have a few different types of water brush pens available. And then the detail paintbrush set of 15. So what you're seeing right now in the video is just a quick look at the packaging for the real brush pen set. I was really unimpressed with it, I'll be honest. I mean, it is fine for getting them to you, but as you can see on the side, it broke. It didn't arrive to me broken, but like after a couple of uses, I managed to snap the plastic on the side. And I was trying to show there in the video as well that you can't pull out an individual tray because they all stack and slightly interlock. So in terms of storage, when you want to be using them regularly, it is not ideal. So bear that in mind, if you're gonna buy these, you are gonna need somewhere else to store them if you don't wanna go crazy. <laughs> And for those who may already have these and have not discovered, like I didn't for ages, there is a numbering system, but it's on the very top of the pen, like I just showed there. I'm not kidding, I only discovered that when I was recording this footage. So I've been using them for hours and I was really annoyed that there wasn't a decent coding system to go along with the swatches that I'm doing, especially because the packaging isn't ideal for keeping them in as well. So we'll look at the watercolor paper pad. Now it is cold press, which means it does have texture. For those of you who know me, know that I don't like texture. So this was an interesting experience. I've tried to capture it as well as I can on the camera. It is also acid free, which means that it helps to prevent the deterioration of colors. So if you want to be selling your original pieces, it's good for that. The website also says it can withstand multiple washes, which it can. And I will cover it a bit later on on how much it can really handle. But the size is great, it's like a 9 by 12 inch, I really like that size, so it's a bit bigger than A4. And it's also 140 pounds, so it's, it's quite thick, it's meant for wet media like watercolour, painting, brush pens, all that kind of stuff. So now onto the water brush pens. These were a great surprise. I liked them a lot more than I was anticipating. My previous water brush pen was by Derwin and I'll have to insert a picture of which one I mean. I hate them so much. The lids are a really awkward shape and they hurt my fingers to take them off and then the, the barrel is really hard to squeeze and yada yada yada. Whereas these ones are much easier. The push button that makes it so much easier to get the water out without hurting my hands. It does give more water than I would like. Perhaps I just need a bit more time to get used to it but it's I wouldn't say it leaks or anything like that so these are now my go-to water brush pens this set comes with three fine and three broad tip essentially it's just three round and then three flats and it's what I'll be using throughout this video to show you how the brush pens and the watercolor pencils work so I started out with the brush pens by trying to show you how they draw because they are not very inky, if that's even a word. The flow of them, if you want a solid line, you have to go very slow. You can see earlier on, like if I'm going faster, it skips a lot, which is the case, especially on this cold pressed textured paper. Although once activated with water, they are quite surprisingly strong. So even though you skip a lot, once you add that water, you get a fair bit of ink. And of course you can just keep layering it up anyway. So it's not a huge problem, but something to bear in mind. Okay, so just to talk about what's happening right now in the video, this is what I spoke about briefly during my elf time lapse. These brush pens do this amazing effect that is really hard to get it to do on demand. But when it's drying, it's, I think it's when it's sort of transitioning from being very pigmented ink to the more watered down areas of the ink. It creates this halo effect that can transition into a different color. Nothing extreme 
theme just like, I don't know, it became a bit more saturated. The photos in the corner are from a scan that I think shows it a little bit better than the camera. You can see the orange one turned a little bit yellow, which I noticed specifically in the elf time lapse, it was happening on her face a lot and I loved it, which is why I then enhanced those yellow areas. The black one turns to a nice grey and then it has this blue band before it goes to the, the light blue grey. It was such a beautiful effect, I love it. That, like I say, is my favourite feature of these real brush pens by Arteza. Although I don't think it was an intended feature, probably more of a happy accident. I will say though, it didn't happen with every single brush pen that I used and I haven't fully tested out the full range. Some of them are more subtle than others. I did notice it more on that black. But let me know if you guys have had experience with these brush pens and if you noticed the same thing. I'd be curious to know which other colors have better effects. So I did want to cover in this video about the lifting capabilities, I guess you would call it. So like you see right now in the video, these little test areas I had done, I think it was maybe two days prior. And then I came back and I added water and tried to lift them. I wanted to see how well they lifted, whether it stained the paper, whether it even lift at all. I was really surprised by the black brush pen because that lifted so incredibly well. I do feel like the orange one took a bit more scrubbing of the paper. I wasn't trying to damage the paper, I, but I was trying to lift it as much as I could. And as you see, there are little bits that sort of come off. And I will talk a little bit more about that right towards the end of the video. Okay, so now for the watercolour pencils. Now this is their professional range of watercolour pencils. Now they do have a set of woodless watercolour pencils, but this is not them. So before I get onto the light fast ratings and all that kind of information, I just wanted to quickly speak about the packaging. Now the tin that these come in is great for storage. So unlike those real brush pens, you don't need to worry about additional storage unless you want to. One thing that was a little bit annoying is these trays are plastic inside and although there are two little semicircles for you to sort of pinch the trays and lift them out, I can't do it. <laughs> I don't know if it's just me but like I can pinch them and lift them slightly but the weight of the pencils when I try to actually pick it out of the tin causes me to drop them. So basically I have to pinch one side and then slip my hand underneath and then move it out if that makes sense. It's not a big issue and I'm happy happy to store them in here but um, that may bother some people so I thought I'd point it out. So in the video I'm about to show you a close-up of a pencil. This is ivory and this one stood out to me because the colour coating of the pencil itself is so very different to what you can see as the tip of the pencil and I just, I don't know, I thought it was kind of funny just in case you were wondering why I was holding up that pencil to the camera. <laughs> so now onto the light fastness. The light fast basically means that the colours take longer to fade depending on their rating and a good light fast rating is what you want to be using if you want to sell your pieces. Now the packaging itself on the back says it conforms to the ASTM which stands for the American Society for Testing and Materials. Basically is an organisation that has set standards for the performance of art materials that a wide range of companies judge the quality of their products by. Now for anyone who is familiar with this standard and how to read the light fastness ratings, do bear in mind that Arteza have for some reason inverted the system. So usually it would be a rating based on like numbers. So one would be the best with the highest light fastness available, although both ratings one and two are actually considered permanent for artists' use. However, like I said, Arteza has inverted these and I did double check because I did a bit of research and I found another YouTuber had already done research into, I don't think it was the watercolour pencils, I think it was the, the standard coloured pencils and they had listed it backwards. So I contacted Arteza myself just to triple check and yes, they have. So a rating of one is by Arteza standard 10 to 25 years. The rating of two is 25 to 100 years. And then the rating of three is at least 100 years. So in their system, three is the best, one is the worst. So do bear that in mind that if you're used to the old system for like paints, I know Winsor & Newton do go by the ASTM rating standards, the order that they do it in. And I don't know why Arteza did it a different way. So basically by Arteza's standard, one is the worst rating. 
Just out of interest, I went through the whole set of these watercolor pencils and I picked out every single one that was a one star rating and I'll insert a photograph of them so you can see, but the rest are two or above. And in fact, I found one that was a four star, which was interesting. There's only one in the whole thing that is a four star rating. I'm hoping that gave a good insight of what light fastness is and how Arteza use it in their products. So now I'm going to talk a bit more about testing these watercolour pencils. Now like I said in my elf painting video, this is the very first time I've ever used watercolour pencils. However, I was under the impression that with watercolour pencils, once you add the water, it would reactivate the pigment so much so that it would just kind of melt away from the paper. But this wasn't the case with these ones. I still found that the lines were still very visible. And I'll be honest, I didn't really like it. It wasn't for me because it meant that I couldn't get a smooth transition. So you'll see earlier, I was testing it with a green, a black and a red. Um, just to see if different colours lifted better or not. I know red generally stains paper more and can be harder to lift, just in most mediums that I'm familiar with. But this seemed to be the case for all of them. Even that light green was really hard to get off. And I think because it was cold pressed and textured paper, the pigment of the watercolour pencils sat in it more and was harder to lift up. So I did find that quite often just taking the water brush pen and then using that against the tip of the pencil and then applying that directly to the paper would give me a much smoother result. But that meant it was much harder to layer. I also tried other techniques of using the pencil after it had been wet, so it was actually a lot more pigmented that way. And then I used it on a wet piece of paper and try to lift it that way as well. And it didn't seem to really make a difference whether or not it went on dry or it went on wet, or if the pencil itself was already wet, it still had issues lifting. And that was a huge downside to me. Anyone that does work with watercolor pencils, let me know if this is a common characteristic of the media. Maybe I'm missing something, but I feel like it shouldn't do that. I don't know. Or maybe I was just hoping it wouldn't do that. So in relation to blending, I do think they work really well together. You see me testing out three different ways. At first I did it really lightly and quite far apart. So it was a really thin wash and it didn't work as well just because the lines still show underneath like I, I mentioned just before. So then I did it closer together and I layered it much heavier on the paper, which obviously resulted in a more pigmented blend, but it was kind of hard to control the colors, but I think that's more down to experience than anything. And then the last test, rather than trying to go for, like a gradient one to the other, I just layered them directly on top of one another inside the circle and they blended lovely together. It made a really great purple. So I do think there is a lot of potential. The issue that I have, and you'll see straight after, I then test the lifting. So after it's dry, I re-wet the area and try and lift it with a combination of lightly brushing and dabbing with tissue. The problem with this is though that you begin to damage the paper. As again, you can see in some of these close-ups when I'm trying to erase those pencil marks underneath, you can see I'm starting to damage the paper. So a word about the paper. Often you see in this video where I am damaging the paper, it is because I am really trying to get that pigment off. Now this is not something you would do in an actual painting. You would never treat your paper this way. But I did notice while I was doing my elf painting that between my layers, I'm letting it dry and then I'm re-wetting, I'm letting it dry, I'm re-wetting. So there is gonna be more and more chance for it to get damaged. But I was quite surprised that the damage happened on her face because I didn't feel like I fully overloaded that with as much water as I did when I was doing the hair. And the hair I really struggled with because I wasn't getting my values dark enough so I was re-wetting it, reworking it a lot more than I felt I was doing with the face. But I only ever noticed a bit of damage on the face. I guess she did have quite a fair few layers there too. And in all fairness, the dryer that I'm using is a new tool of mine that I got a few months ago. So I haven't fully tested that out with my regular paper and it's quite possible that maybe the heat from that is damaging the paper. I guess what I'm saying is that in my opinion, this paper can handle a fair amount of layers, but not a lot. But it is possible that's down to my user error with the heat. I would need to do more testing to say for sure, basically. So take from that what you will. 
So just a quick mention about these miniature brushes that they also sent me. I didn't get to fully test these out so I don't feel like I can do a proper review but I, I just wanted to show you the packaging and I'll get round to doing a review for these once I've fully tested them out. And that about wraps things up. I hope you've enjoyed this review video and that you found it helpful. If you have used any of these products I would love to hear from you so do write me a comment below. Don't forget to give the video a like if you enjoyed it and if you want to see more then hit that subscribe button. Until next time, bye!